All right, we're going to begin. All right, good morning, and welcome to the Committee on Land Use. I am Councilman Marafael Salamanca, I chair of this committee. I would like to thank my colleagues who are present today. We have Council Members Barron, Kuhl, Reynoso, Traeger, Gredenchik, Adams, Ayala, Chair Moya, Rivera, Chair Riley, Brooke Powers, and Borelli. I would also thank Chair Moya and Chair Riley for their work on our two subcommittees. Today we'll vote on a number of applications referred out from both of our subcommittees. We will vote to approve LUs 828, the designation of the Dorans Brooks Square Historic District, which includes approximately 325 buildings in two sections of Frederick Douglass Boulevard in Councilmember Perkins District in Manhattan. This is the first historic district in New York City named for an African American. We will also vote to approve the OUs 835 101 Varick Avenue. This item is an application submitted by the Department of Transportation and the Department of Citywide Administrative Services pursuant to Section 197C of the New York City Charter for the site selection and acquisition of a property located at 101 Varick Avenue in Brooklyn for use as a DOT operation and warehouse facility. The site is located in district represented by Council Member Reynoso. We will vote to approve LUs 825 and 8853. 852 and 853 for the 62-04 Roosevelt Avenue rezoning related to property in Council Member Van Bremen's district in Queens. The proposal seeks a zoning map amendment to change an R6 and R6 slash C1-4 district to a C4-4 district and a related zoning tax amendment to establish a mandatory inclusionary housing area utilizing option one and option two. We will vote to approve LUs 8 Six three for the 48-18 Van Dam Teamsters rezoning, also related to property in Council Member Van, Bre Van Bremen's district in Queens. The proposal seeks a zoning map amendment to change an M2-1 district to an M1-5 district to facilitate office space. We will vote to approve LUs numbers 857 and 858 for the 252 Victory Boulevard rezoning related to property in Council Member Rose District in Staten Island. The proposal seeks a zoning map amendment to change an existing R3-2 and R3-X district to a mix of R3-2 and R6B district with partial C1-3 overlays and a related zone text amendment to establish an MIH area utilizing option one and option two. We will vote to approve three considered numbers 879 and 880 for the Broadway and 11th Street rezoning related to property in Council Member Van Bremen's district in Queens. The proposal seeks a zoning map amendment to change an R5 district to a special mixed use district at MX23 pairing an R7A district with an M1 4 district and a related zoning tax amendment to establish a mandatory inclusionary housing area utilizing option one. We will also vote to approve LUs numbers 875, 876, 877, and 878 for the 130 St. Felix Street rezoning related to property in Majority Leader Cumbles District in Brooklyn. The proposal seeks a zoning map amendment to change an existing C6-1 district in the special downtown Brooklyn district to a C6-4 and C6-6 district. A related zoning tax amendment to establish an MIH area utilizing option one and the workforce option a special permit to modify various bulk requirements, and another special permit to waive accessory, accessory off-street parking requirements. We will vote to approve LUs numbers 854, 855, and 856 for the 495 11th Annual Rezoning related to property in Speaker Johnson's district in Manhattan. The proposal seeks a zoning map amendment to change M1-5 district to a C6-4 district and extend the special Hudson Yards district to include the development site. A related zoning tax amendment to establish a new sub-district G as part of the special district and establish a development site as a new MIH area and a related site selection and acquisition of a portion of the site for use as an NYPD vehicle storage facility. We will also vote to approve the modifications to LUs 859 and 860, the 270 Nordstrom Avenue rezoning related to property in Council Member Carnegie's district in Brooklyn. The proposal seeks a zoning map amendment to change an R7A district to an R8A slash C2-4 district. <clears throat> and a related zoning text amendment to establish an MIH area utilizing option two and the workforce option. 
During the course of, U of, of the ULERP review, the City Planning Commission voted to approve some modifications by changing the proposed R8A-C2-4 district to a mix of R7X-C2-4 and R7D districts. A modification will be to strike the MIH workforce option and to restore the originally proposed R8A-C2-4 designation. This modification will both increase the number of affordable housing units and deepen the affordability while allowing density that is appropriate for their, this large vacant site on a major Brooklyn Avenue. We will vote to approve the modifications that will use numbers 861 and 862, the 17764 Street rezoning proposal related to property in Council Member Yeager's district in Brooklyn. This proposal seeks a zoning map amendment to change an R5 district to an R6B slash C24 district and a related zoning text amendment to establish a mandatory inclusionary housing area utilizing option one and option two. A modification will be to reduce the overall area to be rezoned and retaining the existing residential zoning on mid-block sites where the existing R5 zoning reflects the built context and where there are no development sites as projected in the EAS. We will also modify the approval to further reduce the area proposed to be within the C2-4 overlay district. The rezoned commercial area will be only mapped to a depth of 35 feet, reflecting the avenue fronting buildings which are appropriate for commercial. The remainder of the zoning area will be R6B. This modification ensures the distinction between mid-block and avenue zoning is more fine-tuned for a pre predominantly residential area and focuses the commercial on those buildings fronting the avenue. We will vote to approve the modifications, LU's A42, A43, and A44, the River North proposal related to property in Council Member Rose's district in Staten Island. The proposal seeks a zoning map amendment to rezone an existing R6 slash C2-2 district in the Special Hillside Preservation District to an R7-3 slash C2-4 district within the Special St. George District and an existing R6 slash C2-2 district to an R6 slash C2-4 district, also with the sp Special St. George District. The proposal includes a related zoning text amendment to map a mandatory inclusionary housing program area with option one and two and various changes to the Special St. George District regulations. Finally, the project includes a zoning special permit under the amended special St. George District rules to allow modifications to the applicable bulk regulations, all in order to facilitate the development of three new mixed-use buildings with ground floor, retail, and residential units on the upper floors. A modification would be to reduce the bulk of the proposed buildings by lowering the maximum heights of the eastern and central buildings, also known as buildings one and two, and requiring additional setbacks to relate to the existing built context directly to the south. We will also reduce the area to be rezoned and retain the existing R6 and special hillside preservation designation for the westmost portion of the proposed area, pulling the boundary easterly of St. Nicholas Street. These modifications will permit the development of three new buildings while maintaining significant new corridors into New York Harbor and Lower Manhattan for the upland neighborhoods. And I would like to recognize Council Member Rose for a statement. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Salamanca. Um, today's vote is not an easy one for me. Throughout the public review process, my constituents have voiced their concerns about the proposed height of these buildings and the lack of attention to infrastructure to support all the development on the North Shore. I also value the proposed 30% affordable housing in this project. Our city still faces an ongoing housing shortage, both market rate and affordable housing. This shortage still stands as a major strain on the incomes of working class New Yorkers. This property is also located in an area of the North Shore that I feel is appropriate for development, but not at the height that was proposed by the developers in this application. After months of negotiations and listening to feedback from the public, we have arrived at a proposal that I believe is an appropriate height and will provide an economic stimulus to the commercial de developments along the North Shore. The zoning boundaries that I've heard from my constituents' concerns about the precedent-setting nature of the R7 zoning district. 
I believe this site is a unique site in a unique location. We want to concentrate Div City closer to the ferry, and I believe this project site is on the western, um, is an appropriate western boundary to that density. Therefore, we will modify the application to remove the projected development site number two parcels from the R zone, R7 zoning district and keep those parcels in the existing R6 zoning district. The applicant has agreed to drop the height of building number one from 26 stories to 16 stories, a drop in 10 stories. And the applicant has reduced the height of building number two from 25 stories to 11 stories. And building three will remain at the 13 stories that are allowed regardless of the approval of this rezoning or not. These height reductions have led to a reduction in the total number of proposed units from 750 to 575, a roughly 20% reduction in density. The applicant will be required to provide 30% of the housing for families earning an average of 80% AMI. The applicant is actively working with daycare providers to locate a daycare on site, which are so crucial to our working young families, as well as the potential for a food store on the site, which would be an amenity to support the residents of the building and the neighborhood at large. I'm also pleased to announce the applicant has agreed to a goal of at least 30% of MWBE subcontract subcontractors for the project. This is so crucial to our minority and women owned businesses in reducing the racial and gender equity gap in our economy. The applicant made a commitment to, to staff all three buildings with union service workers. The applicant also agreed to a robust construction workforce development program through the Building Skills New York program that includes developing hiring plans for local jobs and MWBE commitments on the project, working with local stakeholders to recruit candidates and help match trainees to jobs in the construction trade. The applicant plans to participate in the Youth Build Impact Program to give our disconnected young people an opportunity to intern and learn about the construction industry with real life training on the applicant's construction site. 25 new trees will be planted on site, including bioswales, along with other gray infrastructure to help manage stormwater on site. I just have to say, Chair, this will likely be the last vote that I take on land use matter in my district. I want to just briefly reflect on some of the accomplishes, accomplishments we've made for our community. We've put an addition, in addition of over 2,000 new affordable housing units for local residents, funding the new Cromwell Center, $60 million investment in infrastructure to support the Stapleton waterfront redevelopment and the Bay Street rezoning development, over 1,000 new school seats, including a brand new school that can accommodate 600 new elementary and middle school students on the Stapleton waterfront, expansion of legal support and protections for residents at the risk of displacement to support the North Shore, supporting 100 families moving from temporary and shelter housing to a permanent affordable home through the CFEPS voucher program, funding the renovation of Stapleton Pro uh, Playground, Tompkinsville Park, and Tappan Park delivering over 12 acres of waterfront open space along the Stapleton waterfront and funding improvements to the Stapleton station. It certainly has not been easy and some projects still have much work left to do. I still think these projects will be a net positive for working families and local residents. I hope my constituents know I work to deliver as many resources for our community through all of these projects. I look forward to seeing these projects come to fruition and watch a new generation of North Shore residents enjoy this wonderful community and all it has to offer. With all of these considerations, I support the project as modified here, and I ask my colleagues to support this project as well.
Thank you, Councilmember Rose. Uh, I would like to also recognize that we've been joined by Councilmember Gibson as well. All right, are there any questions or remarks from members of the committee? All right, seeing none, I will now call for a vote in accordance with the recommendations of the subcommittees and local council members, and note that a vote of aye on all will be to adopt the following. To approve LUs 828, Dorrance, 835, Varick, 852, and 853, Roosevelt, 854, 855, 856, uh, 495, 11th, 857, 858, Victory Boulevard, 863, Van Damme Teamsters, 875, 876, 877, 878, St. Felix, 879, and 880, Broadway, and 11th Street Rezoning. And to approve the modifications I've described, LUs 842, 843, 844, River North, 859, 860, 270, North Street, 861, and 862, 48th Street. Will the clerk please call the roll? Matthew DiStefano, Committee Clerk, Committee on Land Use, roll call vote. All items are coupled. Chair Salamanca. I would like to congratulate my colleagues, especially Councilmember Rose, who's worked on this uh, rezoning that's, that's coming to her district. Congratulations, Councilmember, and I will aye on all. Gibson. Aye. Barron. Permission to explain my vote? Councilmember Barron to explain her vote. I want to acknowledge the hard work that my colleagues have put into negotiating all of these projects that come before it. I don't take it lightly or dismissive, but the vote that I cast is, is my understanding of the impact, particularly as we have housing developments that basically say 75% is market rate. Basically, that's what many of the projects result in, and those that have uh, an opportunity for co-op are really at uh, ex the extreme upper limits of income so that uh, a studio apartment for co-op is going to cost $339,000. So with all the respect for appreciation for what my colleagues have negotiated, I'm voting yes on 828, 835, 863, and no on all the rest. Thank you. Ku. Reynoso. Traeger. Grodenchik. I vote aye in all, and I, I want to congratulate my colleague and friend, Debbie Rose. I know how much work she put into, how much time she spent with me on the phone uh, into this uh, new development in her district and I congratulate her. I know it wasn't easy, um, but it has been said, um, nothing good comes easy. So um, I congratulate you, Council Member Rose, and I vote aye. Adams. Permission to explain my vote? Council Member Adams to explain her vote. Thank you, Chair. Uh, with heartfelt, um, sincere appreciation for the work that my colleague, Council Member Rose, has put into her thought and knowing how difficult this process has been for her, I want to congratulate her for being steadfast, and I do vote aye on all. Ayala. Aye. Moya. Aye. Rivera. Aye. Riley. I vote aye. Congratulations, Councilman Burroughs. Brooks Powers. I vote aye on all. Borelli. I also Council Member Gibson. Okay, the following is the land use. Excuse me. Council Member Miller. I vote aye. Congratulations, Council Member Rose. So I vote aye. For today's land use vote, the following items were approved by committee by a 15 
In the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, LUs 828, 835, and 863. Uh, the following were approved by committee by a vote of 14 in the affirmative, one in the negative, and no abstentions. That would, those items are LUs 852, 853, 854, 856, 857, 858, 875, 878, 879, 876, 877. And the following were approved with modifications and referred to city planning. LUs 842 to 844. We approved 13 in the affirmative, two in the negative, no abstentions. LUs 859 to 860. 14 in the affirmative, one negative, no abstentions. LUs 861 to 862. 14 in the affirmative, one negative, no abstentions. All right, I would like to thank the members of the public, my colleagues, Council Online, your staff, and the Sergeant of Arms for attending today's hearing. This meeting is hereby adjourned.